NCAA basketball on ESPN. 20 years of great memories. He has seven of the 16 points, and here's a miss. Hello. What else can he do? Oh, is he a superstar? Oh, yes. They're jumping with joy. Here's the super senior taking it in. He's sliding and gliding, lays it up, says count it. The tradition continues with an ACC doubleheader. First, NC State takes on Duke. Then at 9, Wake Forest takes on Maryland. But first from Tobacco Road, it's the Wolf Pack and the Blue Devils. Tip-off from Cameron Indoor Stadium is next. It's coming, the phenomenon. From Cameron Indoor Stadium, it's ACC basketball with the top two teams in the conference. North Carolina State at 12 and 2, Duke coming in at 13 and 2. The Blue Devils have won 26 ACC games in a row, one of three major streaks they're riding, and that's just one short of the Wolfpack's all-time record. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dick Vitale. It's great to have you with us. NC State would like to keep that 25-year-old record intact. And Dick, tonight they might have a shot. Well, Mike, great being with you again. But I'll My tell pleasure. you this. They do have a shot. They do a great job on a defensive end. Something's got to give, as they say. We got the best defense in the conference against the best offense. Defensively, when you look at Thornton Inge and Wilkins, they do a phenomenal job rebounding, and they really attack the glass. Take a look at the NC State lineup, and they have gotten a lot of production out of these kids. Anthony Grundy now leads the team in scoring at almost 15 a game. He comes off a career-high 30 against Wake Forest. For Duke, Carlos Boozer has given the team the presence they need in the middle offense as well, averaging 17 and a half points a game in his last eight games. Let's go down the courtside, check in with our colleague Brad Doherty. Brad. Thanks, Mike. As you mentioned, North Carolina State's defense is very good. They'll have a difficult task tonight, though, stopping Carlos Boozer on the inside, who has improved dramatically. I think they'll use a little bit of body from Damon Thornton with Kenny Eads coming from the weak side to help. It's going to be a tough task no matter what, but it should be a heck of a basketball game. Back to you, Mike. And that is a young man playing center out of necessity. He was a forward in high school. He's big enough to play in the middle, 6'9", 260. But he's very offensively skilled on the interior. Came off that broken foot, took him a little while. At 25 points, Mike, and a big win over Michigan on the road. Thornton against Boozer. NC State will control. Unheralded, unreally sung is the little guy with the basketball, Justin Ganey. Ganey getting a little more rest this year than he has for the entirety of his career. You remember one year in the ACC tournament, he played every minute of four games. Long range jump shot by Grundy is no good, and here comes the freshman Williams. He dishes it off. That shot's blocked inside. Thornton got back in a hurry and got a piece. They got some people that'll go after the basketball with Thornton and in. Duke for the steal. Give it's it a up. three on one. Carroll. What a great pass. He would be my MVP of the conference if I voted today. Chris Carroll has been sensational all year long, Mike. And your second place vote would probably have to go to Shane Battier. I couldn't agree more. Excellent interior defense. Ganey tried to drive. Had three guys in his face when he forced it up. Duke not only excels on the offensive end, they force numerous turnovers with their defense, which lead to a lot of offensive scores. Great passing as well as Carowell gets the pass from Jason Williams. 4 nothing Blue Devils. Carowell. Steve Wojciechowski, Dick, told me before the game that as long as we can convince Jason Williams, who was not a point guard in high school, that the conventional passes will give him 11 or 12 assists a game. We're going to be in great shape. He's got a brilliant future. He's got a great upside. Thornton under pressure. It's blocked by Bozer. Inch. <laughs> NC State is going to worry about a quick Duke run here. Carroll moves so well without the basketball. We talk often about how that's a lost start in the game, but not in the Duke uniform. They get a lot of motion. is Battier down low to Carroll for the layup. I'll tell you, he's done with it all. He can play on the inside, the outside. What really makes him special, they go on a road, they beat Maryland, and he scores 25. They beat Virginia, he gets 20. 
And Herb Sendek has already seen enough. Six nothing after two minutes and six seconds at Duke. Six nothing Duke. Dick, so far they're running a clinic. Yeah, they really are. They're showing how to get the ball out in transition. Chris Carroll filling the break, 45 degree angle. Now we see a little shuffle cut, great diagonal cut. Now we see the post up on the interior. Brilliant play. I want to ask Brad Doherty. Brad, you had to come in here as a player. What is it really like coming to Cameron Indoor Stadium with the Cameron crazies going bananas? What is the feeling of a player coming here trying to play on this floor? Well, the tough thing, Dick, obvious, is to come in and try to focus. It's really difficult with all the distractions. But what you have to do is stick with your offense. Go to what you practice every day. Try to get some production out of it so you score and you relax and get into the game. If you struggle early, you can get blown out of this place. That's what NC State is worried about right now, the steal. Nate James, 8-0. I'll tell you, all the veterans have stepped up. There are a lot of places I've been, Mike, that have a lot of enthusiasm, but there is only one that is absolutely the best in America when it's in, in Timis... It's in... What's the word, Mike? Help intimidating? Me. Yeah, intimidating, baby. 60th Picture. anniversary of Cameron Indoor Stadium. Thornton kicks it outside. Grundy goes into the corner, and Thornton finally gets NC State on the board. Nice little penetration created the opportunity for Thornton, made the open shot. Now they got to come down with a stop. They have not been able to make a stop on a defensive end. And they've all been layups. Boozer lost the dribble, somehow got it back. Nice anticipation by Grundy, and he gets the steal. The sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. Had 30 against Wake Forest and a blowout over Wake. Ganey thought he had a layup coming inside. Instead, it's the fourth turnover for North Carolina State. There's the steal by Nate James, just play, playing in a passing lane. Overplay, steps in, anticipates well, and then finishes with the jam. Battier seems to be comfortable inside and outside to miss shot the rebound to Ganey. Ganey, Mr. Clutch, has made some big shots this year, beat Purdue and beat Maryland with a big shot at the end of the game. Wilkins gets a touch inside. Kenny Inge fighting with Carowell. Give it to him. Wilkins wanted the ball. He's got the guy on his back. Give him the ball inside. Boozer with a lot of pressure, but Thornton somehow got it up and in. David Thornton had so many injuries early in his career. Mike had the hip surgery and the foot injury. He was a rising star, made the All-ACC freshman team, but as you said, Dick, it's been one injury after another for that young man. Yeah, he lost the ballot for Rookie of the Year to Ed Cody that year. Another great pass, and Carowell on the receiving end from Williams. Carowell does a sensational job moving without the basketball. Oh, how I emphasize that to young people. Learn to play without the ball in your hands. Chris Carowell is fifth in the ACC in field goal percentage. Tonight, he's had four layups. Thornton lost it out of bounds. Touched last by Battier. Timeout on the court. 10-4. Duke over NC State. Carroll has eight of the ten. 10-4 early. Duke over North Carolina State. And we'll stay in the ACC for the second game of our doubleheader. Wake taking on Maryland at 9 Eastern. Both teams coming in with 11-5 records. But Maryland looking for a conference win. They're desperate for it. The Terps led by 6'9 forward Terrence Morris, averaging nearly 17 and 8.5 and rebounds a game. Maryland and Wake Forest, Dave Sims and Dan Bonner standing by at the conclusion of our broadcast. The numbers on Terrence Morris. And the Terps have really gone into a tailspin. Yeah, well, they're only three in a conference, so this game is a game of urgency, both for the Maryland and Wake Forest is coming off getting blown out by 20 by North Carolina State. Damian Wilkins with the travel. And if you recognize the name, yes, sirree, his uncle was Dominique, the human highlights film, and his dad was Gerald, who played in the NBA for a number of years. Bob Gibbons, who is a recruiting analyst, called him the National High School Player of the Year. Look at here at the offensive comparison early in the game. Turnovers, NC State with five. And Duke knows how to turn those into layups. This is Battier. Switch 12-4. Oh, 
I'll tell you, Battier and Carwell have really learned how to be stars in a very classy way. Last year, they played in the shadow of guys like Elton Brand and Langdon and company. I'll tell you, if you needed 27 points on a given night from either one of them, you got it. Day. You and I were talking off the air, and we said, could you imagine what this team would be like if all those kids came back, McGetty and Elton Brand and Avery and company? To take a look here at the points off turnovers, look at the numbers, NC State with zero, and Duke already with eight. Matt Christensen and Matt Dunleavy, or Mike Dunleavy, excuse me, in the ball game for the first time. Christensen picked up the personal foul, his first. He gives him a big body on the inside, physical presence. Trying to get a few minutes so he can rest Boozer. NC State not doing very much with its offense. Here's the lean in. Kenny Inge, he's double teamed inside. Wilkins got the follow in the bucket. And Bobby Donato goes to the death. The official, the zebra, went down. What a play by Wilkins, showing superb strength on the offensive board. Great hands on the inside. They love this guy. He's going to be a special player in an NC State uniform. Look at those hands. Look at that wingspan. And then he knows how to complete the play with a little jump hook. Bobby D going down to the deck. Looks like he's okay. Bounces right back up. Got to send him to the free throw line. He's the one that took the punishment on that. Exactly. Give him two shots. Steve Gordon talking with him. That was two on Christensen already. The young man who was... Uh, in his fifth year already at Duke, but two of those years he spent on the uh, Mormon mission, one year as a red shirt. They want Achilles heel at Duke. They can't afford any kind of injury. They got six players that really dominate the play in time. Really played those six almost extensively. They throw in Horvat a little bit, mix him in with Christensen for a few minutes. But basically they got six guys, a super six that they play. Dunleavy, who is going to be a spectacular player before he's done. He can handle, he can shoot the ball, but I love little Jason Williams. Battier really has range on that shot, and this is this one. And here comes Grundy. Grundy was well, playing a lot of point guard this year to give some of his teammates a little rest. There's a bank shot inside. Ron Kelly off the bench, and Kelly hitting almost 10 points a game off the bench. State right back in it. He's got good offensive skills. I don't think they're going to go away. This is a tenacious basketball team, a team that physically plays well on a defensive end despite the early layups by Duke. Battier blows right by Kelly for the layup. His quickness just takes him away from the basket, utilizes his quickness to the goal. Exceptional driver along the baseline. Came out of the same high school as Chris Weber. Now doing a phenomenal job with Sacramento. Battier has four. The lead is five. Man-to-man -man defense by Duke. Jason Williams very strong physically. There he is playing the ball. Ganey gives it up to Wilkins. Ganey's like an Iron Man. Plays so many minutes. A little short arm jump shot by Thornton. And he has six. Good little execution by North Carolina State, little dribble penetration, kicking it out to the open man after they get help. Williams so strong with those passes. Jump shot by Carrollo. That's the first shot he's had that wasn't a layup tonight. On the run, Grundy coming off a 30-point performance with a miss. Look at Williams keep it alive. But Boozer rips it down. I like the way Williams pushes the ball up the floor. Always gets him into a running mode. Dunleavy, good outside shooter, missed that one. Excellent block out inside. And you don't Great see, job by Ganey. You don't see a lot of block outs today in college basketball. Williams with a reach in and his first foul. Thought he had the steal. You mentioned blocking out, Mike. Last night I had a game with Brad Nessler. And in that game, Florida loses to Tennessee. And simply because they don't block out. Three possessions at the end of the game. A lost start. Well, especially for guards, it's not often you see a guy like Ganey at six feet tall going to that much effort to keep a bigger guard off the boards. Let's go to our big guy, Mr. Darty. What about the art of blocking out? We just don't see it in college basketball, Brad. No, I mean, a lot of the fundamentals today in the game, Dick, are, are kind of going by the wayside. But whenever you have programs like Duke or North Carolina State, you're going to see good, fundamentally sound basketball. I love to see those little guys box out, box out those big guys like it. it makes you want to swat them, but that's a, <laughs> that's a good job. Which you did. Zone defense by Duke now. 2-3 set. And that lets Archie Miller in the ball game. The mad bomber who hasn't gotten a lot of minutes this year. But you play zone and Archie Miller's eyes light up. 
He's averaging 16 minutes a game this season. That's his fourth three is made this year out of seven attempts. Dunleavy nearly threw it away, and now he did. Marsha Williams, the freshman from Wisconsin, is fouled by Boozer. And they, NC State making a run here. They've tied it. Now they have a chance to take the lead. I tell you, they never got rattled after they fell behind. They did what Brad Doherty was talking about a little bit earlier. They just continued to execute. You look at this athlete, Marshall Williams. They really believe he's going to be a big-time star, very physical player. He was Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin, the only three-time All-State player in the history of that state. I thought they showed me a lot that they could go down and beat Purdue, and Purdue was playing well at Purdue, and Ganey made that shot in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And they've really improved their schedule, and it's even going to get better next year. And they're really upset they're not in the top 25 right now, and I can understand why. They've beaten some quality teams. I'll tell you one thing this year. There were three teams out of the ACC in the top 64 last year. This year, I really believe you're going to see at least five go out of this conference. Virginia's coming on strong. Thing. Pete Gillum has done a wonderful job with that ball club. North Carolina State surviving the early run. They have the lead. North Carolina State by two over Duke. And so far this year, North Carolina State's Herb Sendek knows the defense has carried him. Early on in the season, our defense has been our salvation. It's been the thing we've done the best. We have to get better as an offensive team as we continue through the season. And certainly, we have to maintain and even improve on the defense we've already played. He did a great job defensively also when he was in a Mid-American Conference at Miami of Ohio. Learned under Rick Pitino, served as an assistant. I was telling you earlier, Billy Donovan, Mr. Sendick, and Tubby Smith on the same staff with Rick Pitino. Not bad. Foul call, 12-2 run by North Carolina State. And nothing spectacular, just solid defense. Herb also, you ready for this, Mike? 3.96 academic average at Carnegie Mellon as a student, a brilliant student. Industrial management, what is he doing coaching basketball? Oh, gee. One thing industrial management pays as well. Patty A. He's the specialist in taking charges, now he gets one. He's the Minister of Defense, was the Defensive Player of the Year, voted last year. As you look at Mr. Intensity, Mike Krzyzewski, I'm going to watch that batting eight. Look at a good help. Good rotation by North Carolina State. They give a lot of help. They play defense as a unit. Five team fouls on Duke, only one on North Carolina State. Miller with a good pass inside to Wilkins. A little drop step got him free. Tip won't go. Knocked away, and Duke finally controls. Dudley almost threw it away and got it back. Nice pass by Dunleavy inside. That's goaltending on Kenny Ann. Yeah, got to score that basket. Duke does a great job at attacking the basket, filling the lane. They really kick it out exceptionally well and utilize that diagonal pass, always filling lanes. The thing about Duke basketball that always impresses everybody, especially the first time you see them, all of them can score, all of them can pass, all of them run, and they all play defense. What else can you ask? For? And they're all McDonald's All-Americans. I was only hoping to have a Wendy's when I coached. <laughs> You were looking from the second team from Bob's big boy, don't That's you? right. <laughs> Aren't you working around Batty? Eh? Coming off surgery, back surgery. Inge, they're going to call Inge for the offensive foul, and he goes down. Remember, Inge coming off a knee injury, and he's slow to get up. A lot of people thought he'd be out for six weeks. He had a partial tear in the second game against Old Dominion. Showed a lot of courage and came back earlier than anticipated as he goes oh. down to the deck. And you could see the brunt of it was taken on the knee that still has the brace on it, and he's limping off. Right now, Sanders playing on the inside, a shot blocker. They're hoping to get some positive minutes. I think he's got a heck of a future from out of Tampa, Florida. 6'11", freshman. He's got to get a little stronger. Well, I hope Kenny Inge is all right. I mean, he is critical to the potential success of his ball club. Yeah, he brings a certain toughness, a mentality that's really needed. Look across America at the good clubs like Duke and Carowell, Madsen at Stanford. They bring Peter Michael at Cincinnati, a special toughness. Williams with good quickness reach in foul by Archie Miller. 
you know, everybody always talks about the uh, the number of people that Duke lost, but North Carolina State lost their leading scorer, adding Adam Harrington. Keith Bean also transferred, and Ron Anderson. And he, this was really addition by subtraction. These were three guys that didn't seem to fit the chemistry of this club, and they seem to be much happier that those three guys are gone. I'll tell you one thing, Mike. You hit it on a nail when you talk about that magical word, chemistry. So many times you could line up teams with great ability, but if they don't function as a unit, you're just not going to win in a game of basketball. And the last thing you want is teammates sniping at each other. It really doesn't work. You don't normally have that at Duke. They play as a unit representing that jersey. A lot of body contact. Carowell gets the bucket and the foul. He's so physical and these camera crazies love him. I don't know if he loves him, but Mr. Carowell always seems to come up with a big play. Here he is now, triple threat position. He can drive, he can pass, or he can shoot. He decides to drive, uses the left hand. Hey, his former teammate in high school, you saw him at Wake Forest, Lauren Woods. Is he becoming a big time star in Arizona? I had him, Mike. The kid's improvement is unreal. Carowell in and out on the free throw, nearly kept alive by Duke. The Blue Devils up by two as we approach the halfway point here in the first 20 minutes. As Ganey, just a solid player, always giving the ball up, defends. Marshall Williams kicks it back out to Kelly. Good ball movement here, wide open is Grundy. That was created by the extra pass by Justin Ganey. A reversal of the basketball, bringing it side to side. Something Jerry Green of Tennessee talked about last night, how essential that is to win. Williams trying to answer with a three, partially blocked. Oh, a great heads up play inside by Banks. Or Nate James, check it. That was Nate James with the call. Gene Banks, the name of the pass. Yeah, I tell you what. You know what? He's the only player in the history of Duke to have a triple double. That's hard to believe. Yes, isn't it? With all the great players that have played in that uniform. I hate those flashbacks, you know? In fact, the guy that's come the closest to a triple-double was Jason Williams against DePaul. He had 15 points, 10 assists, and 9 rebounds. Unbelievable. Last foul was on Carowell. That was his first. Sixth team foul against Duke here in the first half. And remember, people, 43 in a row at home. Duke has won. Last time they lost here, Tim Duncan and Wake Forest, January 11th, 1997. Nice bounce pass inside the layup to Grundy. I really like Grundy. He moves well without the ball. I like guys that know how to play the game in complete fashion and have some versatility. Marshall Williams got some penetration on this. And Jason Williams with the turnover. As Mike and his coaching staff, Johnny Dawkins, David Henderson, Herb Sendick, as you look at Mr. Shashevsky, unbelievable. Eight trips to the Final Four. Mr. Basketball, Johnny Dawkins. David Henderson to Mike's left. Steve Wojciechowski joined the staff this year. He was a broadcaster a season ago when uh, Quinn Snyder left for Missouri. Wilkins gets by Battier, pulls up in the lane. Battier with a block. The follow by Thornton. Thornton again, blocked by Battier. Got it. I'll tell you, Thornton's a big time offensive rebounder. Knows how to utilize his body, and he's healthy for one once in his career. Played in high school with Kenny Inge. They played together. I want you to work on the offensive glass. There he is, it's deflection, but he stays with it. He just utilizes that body, catches the basketball, and knows how to complete the play on the glass. Thornton, 6'8", almost 240. He's really fighting Battier in there for it. State with a three-point lead. First time the line hits the free throw, 24-20. Boozer getting a breather, and now the crowd comes to its feet. It's hard to believe they're down four the way they started this game. Isn't it, Duke? Tough? Isn't it? They came out really on fire. They welcomed the challenge. These kids are not intimidated in North Carolina State. They're going to have to earn number 44 here tonight, Mike. James picks up his dribble. 11 on the shot clock. Williams down the lane. Big time high school scorer. Missed that one. Battier with a rebound. Had that one blocked. Great hustle by Thornton. Thornton. Look at him handle the ball. Oh, he carried that one. Lost his dribble. Got a little break in the action. I want to ask our partner down here. I heard Mr. Darty, and I hate to see it happen. We may lose him. He may be going back to the NBA. His former teammate, I heard, is going to call him up to play for the Wizards. Hey, Brad, what about him? 
Well, Dick, I, I guess if he's not going to play for the Wizards, he's going to have something to do with the basketball operations. I don't know. I, I know Michael enjoys playing his golf, so it's going to be difficult playing golf in the middle of the wintertime in Washington. But if he is involved, uh, he will do a tremendous job and bring a lot of credibility to that basketball program. Brad, maybe he'll make you a deal. He'll play if you will. <laughs> no way, but I'm staying right here with you guys. <laughs> Dunleavy. Boy, the defensive pressure really picked up by NC State. And that's been their strong suit all year. The best defensive team in the ACC. Excellent ball movement. Ganey wide open and buries it. I can't get over the way. They're so unselfish. That is chemistry and that is a really in relationship to the coach. He has convinced these kids to give the ball up for the better shot. That's why they're off to their best start since the 89-90 season. Carrawell goes baseline with a miss. Here comes Ganey on the run. They're getting confidence with each possession. Aren't so. they ever? You can see it. Grundy short on that one. Not a good shot right there. Not a good shot. Didn't get it within the realm of the offensive set. Williams good pass into Carrawell. Won't go, but he draws the foul. So look at Johnny Dawkins and Wojciechowski on the sideline. It was Mr. Intensity when he played. Part of that family at Duke. Look at the job Tommy Amick is doing down at Seton Hall. Had a big win the other day. Hey, by the way, our hearts go out to the families of those young people that lost their lives there at Seton Hall in that fire on my alma mater. I, I just couldn't believe it when I heard it on the news today. Johnny Dawkins, just one of the many uh, numbers hanging from the rafters here at Cameron Indoor. Carowell misses his second free throw. Shooting 76.9 from the line. Duke, the best free throw shooting team in the ACC, better than 75% as a team. Battier, you see, gets a breather as Boozer comes back in. And that's going to win a lot of games for North Carolina State. They were last in the ACC in shooting free throws until the last game where they went 31 for 37 against Wake Forest. It's a six point lead. Mike Krzyzewski trying to keep his club in at State on a run. Welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke had leads of 8-0 and 12-4. I think the key to this ballgame, NC State did not panic. We've got a triple header of NCAA basketball tomorrow night. Starting in the Big Ten, Dick and Brad will venture to Columbus, Ohio. Number 10, Michigan State against 15th ranked Ohio State at 7. Then at 9, Quentin Richardson leads number 22 to Paul against Louisville. Sports Center comes your way at 11. Then at midnight to Big West, New Mexico State will take on Long Beach State, a triple header, starting at 7 on ESPN. I can't wait to get down to Columbus for that matchup. Great guard play. Michigan State's won eight in a row on a road over the last two years in the Big Ten. Excellent work on the offensive boards by North Carolina State. They're pounding Duke right now, 14-7 in the rebounding department. That's why they're up by eight. And that's where they're winning the game, really attacking the offensive boards. They got some strong physical experienced people trying to trap. I think Duke's very tough to trap. Boozer into the lane and banks it home. They usually find the open man. A very difficult team to lay traps on would be the way Duke advances and moves the basketball and the way they can shoot and make the open shot. First two points of the night for Boozer, who in his last eight games is averaging 17-5. Kelly, very offensive-minded. Little fadeaway jumper. Hangs on the rim, won't go for it. They're going to get Jason Williams involved offensively, looking to make a few shots. There he is kicking one out to Dunleavy, who can shoot it. Dunleavy with a three. He created that little triple penetration, a trademark of Duke basketball. Attack the defense, and then kick it back out, and then the Cavalry crazies go bananas. That's the first three the Blue Devils have made tonight in five tries. It's That's a walk on Ganey. And what's happened, their defense is not really creating opportunities against Herb's club. We're going to see the penetration right now by Jason Williams. He draws two people to him, and then he kicks the ball right out to the open guy. They do a phenomenal job recognizing open people, Mike. Dunleavy, of course, the son of the former Blazers coach. Coach's sons always turn out to be strong. Oh, oh, He's going to be a special point guard. He's learning by every day and every possession the role of a point guard. He's got a great way of attacking the basket. He can make open shots. I love Jason Williams. The lead is cut to one. Oh, look 
Hopkins, they missed him. They got to get him inside. I, kid does a great job posting. He had great position. Now they throw it away. Here comes Carroll. Oh, no, spinning. Blocked for the foul. JW, there he is again. Gets three people to play him. I mean, if I'm Carlos Boozer, I take him out for dinner every night. <laughs> there he is with the spin. I mean, I gotta ask Brad. Hey, Brad, what's it like to play with a point guard that penetrates, gets you the open shot? I mean, you'd take him out to dinner every night, wouldn't you? Oh, I'd have him every night out to dinner, Dick. You can make a living off of guys like, like Jason Williams. He sees the floor extremely well. He and Carlos Boozer are going to be dominant over the next several years in the ACC. We are tied at 29 with 514. Of course, Mike Krzyzewski has always had a great affinity for point guards. Well, he's had some great ones here. When you think of Tommy Amica, who's done a phenomenal job in coaching Quinn Snyder, and of course, Bob Hurley, who was sensational when he played the point. Wojciechowski. Well, Joe was one of my favorites. I mean, he got everything out of his ability he possibly could. Well, that's a coach's job, really, to get the most out of his people, and they certainly did that with Wojciechowski. Duke on a 9-2 run to regain the lead. It's such a spurt basketball team. Does the double up wide open? Wilkins. Jason Williams picks up his second personal. And look at the streaks. They've won 13 games in a row. After losing their first two against Stanford and UConn, tough way to start, they won 26 ACC games in a row, second longest in history to North Carolina State for 25 seasons ago, and 43 straight here at Cameron. I tell you what's even more impressive, when you look at that ACC number of 26 in a row, try this out, people. That's not Cupcake City, but that's 21.5 the margin of victory. I mean, that's amazing. I was talking to our buddy Freddie Gadelli today, our outstanding producer who works with you in football, and he said it blew him away when I told him about the 26 games. He said, in the ACC? Yes, my friend, in the ACC. And as you said, that spread, they were just beating people. They were blowing him right out of the building. Kelly hits a couple of free throws, an excellent offensive player, and State regains the lead. Dick, you were right when you said earlier, this is a team that will not go away, referring to NC State. They really have a lot of experience and a lot of toughness. That's what I like about them. Herb Sendick's got a bunch of kids that really believe they can win. They lost a tough game on a road to North Carolina, who's really been a little disappointment, obviously. But in that game, North Carolina shot about 80% to beat them. Car Heels have done that before. Boozer from behind Grundy just trying to prevent him from getting the easy layup. It's his first. Boozer does a great job hanging around the basket and has the offensive skill to be able to convert. You know, you mentioned about North Carolina in that game. You're not going to beat a club when Coda goes 8 for 8. And Brendan Haywood went 7 for 7. I mean, that's incredible. Haywood is, seems to be a tough matchup for them. Yeah, it really is. And I, I'll tell you the problem right now in North Carolina. I think they're very capable of going on a run. I know people are getting off their bandwagon. But the bottom line is they really don't have superb quickness. And they can't no. get easy baskets. In fact, I was doing research today. And, and there are three losses in a row. They had 58 turnovers and only forced 29. It's not like the old days when they go out and trap and pressure people. It just doesn't work for them right now. Exactly. But Bill Guthrie will get him back to that. I got him Saturday against Florida State. That's a game they must win. It's at home. 32-31. The lead is one. This is Wilkins, the freshman from Orlando. And a man pressure defense. See, Kaney really is so smart with the basketball. Left alone, Kenny Inch. Kenny Inch, he was a teammate of Morgan in high school, played together in Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, Atlantic Christians High School. We're under four minutes to go. The Wolfpack loses of only one ACC game this year, up by a bucket. Betty, oh, what a great pass. And another foul inside by Grundy, just trying to stop Boozer from slamming one. It just amazes me how Boozer gets free so often. He did it against Michigan. He's done it on numerous occasions against Virginia. And he seems to hang around the basket and is always ready to catch the ball and score. Now, there again, it's created by the drive, the dribble, the penetration, and the dump down. Grundy's got to start saying to his teammates, hey, fellas, I can't do this very often. I've exactly. him, too. 
Grundy though has those long, long arms. He plays a lot bigger than his size. He's got a he's got wingspan, wingspan of six six, yeah. and he, even though he's only six two. Almost went to actually Cincinnati was recruiting and went to Hargrave Military. He committed early in his career out of high school when he was in Bowling Green, Kentucky to Bradley and then decided to go to Hargrave and came here and they're happy to have him. Tied at 34, Jason Williams so far, the point guard for Duke with five assists really helping their offense. That's why Mike Krzyzewski likes him. He's an outstanding scorer. He's you knock out the first two games that we lost, he's shooting well over 40% from three-point range. And he can defend the ball. He's still learning that position. He didn't play point guard all the time in high school, so it, it's, a, it's a tough position to learn. And another thing about Jason Williams, he and Carlos Boozer both committed to Duke before Brand and Avery left. Exactly. They would have been content to come here and play behind stars for a year. Instead, they're immediately thrust into this lineup. It says something about their character. I'll tell you something else. What people don't realize, they lost their first two games of the season. Those kids made their debut at Madison Square Garden, yeah. and they lost not to Cupcake City, to Stanford and Connecticut, two of the top five teams in the nation. Both games, they could have won. Well, so, overtime to Stanford and a close game to Connecticut. And since then, they have not walked to the locker room with an L. Nate James picks up his first personal. Played a lot of minutes. That's the only thing you've got to be concerned about when you talk about the end of the year, playing the kind of minutes they're playing. As you look here at the summary, both clubs shooting the ball fairly good. Three-point line has really not been strong for Duke tonight, and that's one of their real strengths, shooting with three. But more than twice, what NC State has got inside, the Wolfpack goes on the back of the top by one. North Carolina State's 11 and 0 at home in that new building, the ESA building. They're 11 and 6, and now they won. You know, they talk about respect. I have one really simple solution for them. Win tonight, and they'll get all the respect, and they'll work for the polls. That's all I got to do is come here to Durham and win. I got to see that building for the first time on Saturday night when they play uh, Georgia Tech. James forced that one up in traffic. Georgia Tech, Bobby Krem's got a big win over Maryland. Marshall Williams, the freshman. Fake the three. He's a first stop player to play a number of positions inside, outside. Kelly over Bozer. Kelly with eight off the bench. I'll tell you, Kelly's got good offensive skills. We saw that last year in him down the low post. He has ability to convert on the inside. Nice entry. Now Kelly posted up. Boozer allows him to catch the basketball and doesn't really challenge him as he shoots that little hook shot down the lane. There's another entry. There's the good bounce pass. Not a little jump hook, Brad Doherty style. He knew he was going to lose minutes this year when Wilkins came in and was going to get that starting forward spot, but he's made the most of the minutes he gets off that bench. Well, the win big in college basketball, you've got to have some people that can contribute off the bench. You never know about an injury. You look now in Arizona, they lose the kid Richard Jefferson, and now they're going to that bench getting Walton to play, and they got a big day coming up Thursday at UCLA. Well, how about Mateen Cleaves at Michigan Cleaves, State exactly. if you can survive that? Exactly. Now they got a tough one coming Thursday night at Schottenstein Arena. But they hook up with Mr. Scooty Pad and my guy, Mr. Red, who can score. I know Brad Nassim is already in Columbus. I hope I get there. There's no snow tomorrow, right? No snow in Columbus during January. You get him? Three pointer by Dunleavy won't go. And they're going to get Boozer underneath over the back for his second personal. The first Grand Slam of the year will continue on ESPN and ESPN2 over the next week and a half. Martina Hingis going for her fourth consecutive Australian Open title. Pete Sampras tries to get back to the top of the ATP ranks as he goes for a record-breaking 13th Grand Slam singles title. Coverage continues tonight at 12.30 on ESPN2, Thursday afternoon at 1 on ESPN. Sampras and Lindsay Davenport are going to win that line. Sampras and Lindsay Davenport as he comes up into the other free throw line for the first attempt. 38-34. Missed them both. Did Kelly. Good trying to cut into that lead with 2.42 to go. Williams guarded by Miller. Gets the double team. Battier. All the way. Somebody moved in over to close off the driving angle on Battier. 
I'll tell you one thing North Carolina State's doing an excellent job is their perimeter defense shutting down the three-point shot, but no one rotated over on Battier. Now, Battier made a mistake because Boozer was open, but he obviously didn't make a mistake. Well, that's a high percentage shot. Look at the double up on the post. Kelly double team took the shot anyway. Not a great choice by Kelly. No, it's a double team. You've got to find the open man in a post. Williams, great pass to Carowell. He's bodied out of the way by Marshall Williams and foul. I tell you, Carowell and Lauren Woods, his high school teammates in St. Louis, must have been dynamite in high school together. Yeah, it must have been fun to play them. Shane Battier, just a worker, just a winner. Here he is attacking the basket, so unselfish. One of Mike Krzyzewski's favorites, and if you just talk to the kid two minutes, you understand why. He's just got a winner's mentality and just brings such a special amount of class to that uniform. Carwell goes to the line where he is three of five tonight. 37 and two last year. The number of banquets that I did this year, Mike, and speaking, people would come over to me and say, what happened to the Dukies? I said, what happened to the Dukies? 37 and two. Unfortunately, in America today, unless you win it all, you're a failure. Like whoever gets beat this weekend in football, what happened? They took you to the Super Bowl. And if you get there, you don't win, what happened? Coming into this season, in the last two years, Duke had won 69 games. They did not get the timeout in time. It's a turnover. Turnover City. We had a heck of a first half here. Some real good execution. North Carolina State could have really got rattled early, but they didn't. They held their poise. Tied at 38. Battier. Great block by Kelly, who returns the favor from the other end. Well, Kelly that time closed off the driving angle. Ahead of the pack. Doesn't mean he got a piece of that one, but it's knocked out by Boozer. Both teams showing some superb defense. And both teams getting some outstanding recruits coming in next year. Duke's got a kid I told you about today. Chris Duhon coming here from Louisiana. Louisiana, who they are absolutely going to love. Kelly, where the ball finds him when he's in there. Well, you can't let him get the ball in that deep. Hey, Brad, didn't you like it when you played if they allowed you to get the ball in that deep? Just let him get the ball in the middle of the lane or on the block. You've got to push that big guy off the block, take him, take him out an extra four feet, make him uncomfortable. Did they get that deep and score all night long? Did they push you off the block? They tried to push me off the block. Jay Billis, our guy, I think he pushed you off the block. Oh, Jay was strong. <laughs> <laughs> so Boozer will go back to the line. Came out of Alaska. Alaska's been good to do with the Alaskan assassin, Trajan Langdon. It's not, it's not an overflowing pipeline, but they got two great ones out of there. Wow. And they are two great ones. Here comes Warbath. Gonna get a few minutes, minutes here. Minute 38 left. He's a freshman from Arden Hills, Michigan. Guy who was Minnesota's Mr. Basketball. Wanted to play for Duke since the eighth grade. When they when they recruited him, they thought they would redshirt him this year. But then when they had the departure of Chris Burgess, who transferred right. as well, it depleted their front court size. Lost out of bounds. Tied at 40 with 128 to go. Coming up on the courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. Rich Eisen and Jay Billis will have the struggling heels. A preview of Wake against Maryland at number five Syracuse tries to remain undefeated. Syracuse ever going to go on the road this year? Well, they finally did. They won three games, but somebody had to show Jimmy Beheim how to find the airport. I'll see you Monday night up there in a big win against Connecticut. Duke they got a chance team. to take the lead with 119 to go in the half. Bozier and Dunleavy with a little two-man game, and then we'll get it to Carroll. James with a drive, offensive foul on James. Hey, James with the offensive charge. Good, good job by the rotation of North Carolina State, but again, that's a trademark of Duke basketball. Attack the defense. Try to get help. Here's the defense rotating over. Hey, James, former McDonald's All-American, had some injuries early in his career with the charge. Excellent defense that time by Williams. This crowd's a little stunned right now. This crowd is a little stunned. I thought they they felt it was going to be a little party here the way this game started. They're used to winning large. Shot clock is at 16. Game clock at 50. Miller handling the ball with 
Doug Levy and on him and on Carroll Wilson. Trying to go at halftime with their lead. Psychologically, that can be big to these guys coming here up the road. Shot clock down to five. Miller has to force the three. Not going to bounce by NC State. It will be Duke Ball. Miller's brother was a heck of a shooter when he played at Pittsburgh. Sean Miller now on his staff. His dad, Johnny, an outstanding coach. Blackhawk High School, as you look at his brother, Sean, out of Pennsylvania. One second difference between the shot clock and the game clock, so if, you, if it chooses, could run it down nearly to halftime. One thing that's happening, certainly with Sean, I can see it. He's eating pretty good on that budget at NC State. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lot thinner when he played for Pittsburgh. Mike Krzyzewski giving some final words to Jason Williams on what he wants. Jason really trying to make other people get involved offensively and not looking for his shot here in that first half like he normally did. And he's a kid that averages 15 points a game. Exactly. He's a scoring point guard. You don't want to take that ability away from him. Donald Hand scored big points for Virginia. Congrats to Pete Gillen with his 300 over North Carolina yesterday. Williams still looking at Krzyzewski for instructions and drives the lane and puts it in. He must have heard us, Mike. He must have heard us. He said, I'm going to show those guys how you can score. No, he hurt Krzyzewski. Yes, sir. That's the only one that counts, Michael K. Chris Carrowell with 17 points in the first half, part of Duke's 42, and the big reason they have a two-point lead. This is a nice play, Dick. Yeah, here he is now. He's just going to go one-on-one, -on -one, break down the defensive player, explode, and then he has the super strong body, all state around of New Jersey, All-American in high school. Jason Williams, as we look at the bench, come on, give it a nice cheer, nice reaction. Pretty good time for his first two points. Halftime score 42 40 Duke. Let's join Rich Eisen and Jay Billis. All right, guys, thanks very much. Jay, it seems like NC State is intent on protecting its school record of 27 straight ACC victories. Duke would tie that tonight. Uh, NC State came out very sluggish, but came on strong. Well, I, th I think the pressure that Duke put on them initially really caused NC State to struggle, but they did a good job of getting through that initial problem. They were being forced a little further out on the floor. They turned their backs a little bit, but they handled the pressure better as the half went on. The key for NC State is going to be scoring in their half-court offense. Sometimes they struggle in that regard. They've got to continue to hit the offensive glass, and they also have to continue to hit their free throws. They struggle from there, shooting only 60% on the year. Well, the word struggle is going to be a theme in our halftime report. When we come back, we're going to look at two ACC teams that are struggling in the early conference season. Ed Cota and Joseph Forte of North Carolina and the Terrapins, both on three-game losing streaks. We'll be back to discuss. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers. We're at halftime at Cameron Indoor, where Duke is clinging to a two-point lead over the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. We said at the beginning of the telecast that State might have a chance to protect that 25-year-old ACC game winning streak, that 26-game winning streak that happened 25 years ago, and they're playing like it, Dick. They really are. They could have really got rattled early when Duke jumped out and Carwell dominated, but they did a great job moving the basketball, looking for that extra shot. We take a look right here at dribble penetration, but Duke does an excellent job rotating over and closing it off, but they kick it back out. Now we take a look. Freeze it. See, freeze it right here. They're getting set ready to reverse the basketball, looking for the open shot out of Grundy from the corner. And there's the extra pass, the ball reversal, and there he is finishing off the play with the trifecta, Anthony Grundy. In the paint, they dominated Duke on the interior. It was Duke dominating as they did a great job attacking the basket. But here it is again, dribble penetration, a boozer with the deuce. For Carowell, it was a one-man show early. The shooting percentages in favor of Duke better than 54%. They came in number one in the ACC in scoring. And off the bench, NC State making the big difference. 15 to 3 off the bench. And Kelly was big off the bench, gave yes, him a great post presence. Also remember this, the one negative in the first half, a strong suit of Duke all year long, shooting the three. They were one for seven. And they committed a lot of personal fouls. Boozer got away from edge. He does 
does a great job. Post it inside, drop step move, takes it to the basket with authority. Though not a legit center, he really has good back to the basket skills. And the freshman has a dozen. Great drive by Grundy, but off balance as he took the shot. See, right now, in the first four minutes of this half, you don't want to give Uncle Mo to Duke. You don't want them to come out and really establish tempo and take over here. Williams with a big one-hand pass, but he carried it as he threw it. We take a look. Little Boozer posted up on the inside. Gets himself nice and wide. Now he's going to seal off the defender. As he catches the ball, there's the drop step. The defender overcommits, and he gets the layup. Inge gives up about 40 pounds in that matchup. It's amazing. This kid's right out of high school. How they step into a college uniform, and they're ready to compete. Grundy with James on him. Goes baseline. Back to Inge. Inge all the way. Banks it home. Strong drive by Kenny Inge. Seems like he's been around for years. Yeah. He does. You hear those names. They've been here for like ever. And Justin Ganey, it seems like he's been here forever and played every minute of it. I'll tell you one thing. As you see a turnover by Duke, a poor play there. Remember the miracle that almost happened during the first year of Herb Sendick when they beat Duke and they beat Maryland in the semifinals of the ACC tournament and nobody expected it? They just ran out of gas in the final. They didn't have anything left in the tank. Great pass inside to Ganey and Wilkins. Gets the bucket off the game. He assist. I can see why Bob Goodwin's rated him so high. He understands how to play. He knows his strength, and his strength is to operate around the basket. Tied at 44. Jason Williams. What a block by Thornton. And then he saved it. See, Wilkins, not a guy that's a high flyer and a high riser and a human highlights guy, but he's got a super strong body. Took a bad shot right there in that possession. Leaned into a double team and had it blocked. Nate James left alone for a pull-up jumper. He missed it. So many guys can't make the 15-foot medium-range jump shot. The game has almost become either layup or the trifecta. Tied at 44. Here's Jason Williams playing defense out here on Ganey. He may make my top five diaper dandies in America. I'm going to pick in about two weeks. Thornton from 17 with a miss. In fact, I'm almost definite he'll be on there along with Jason Gardner from Arizona. Williams oh, tries the three. Kept alive. Carowell with a loose ball off the loser tip, but he can't hit. Both teams come out a little cold. One thing about NC State, they rebound. They really attack the basketball. If you rebound and defend, you always have a chance to win. Thornton nearly traveled on the way in, but a monster jam by Inch. Kenny Inch, he can jam with the best. He and Thornton, they put a lot of dunks on it. Dunkathon meter. State by two. We got a war here. They're going to really have to lace him up to win 44 in a row. James had that shot partially blocked by Grundy. I want the trifecta. I want a triple overtime. Had a double OT last night. Florida and Tennessee get three OTs here tonight. And to get four tomorrow with Michigan State and Ohio State. And that'd be a great week. Let's get paid for overtime now. No, I talked to my boss today, Brian Sheriff, and he said, don't think you're getting no overtime pay for those overtime games. Grundy picked up his third personal foul. That's big. Yes, because it is. when he gets in trouble, they lose a valuable defender as well as a guy with potential scoring ability, as indicated by his 30 against Wake Forest. James out of Washington, D.C., tabbed as a freshman starter, then ruptured his thumb tendons, missed 14 games that year, missed his sophomore year with a knee being rebuilt, had to fight for playing time when he came back last year. This is a guy that Mike Krzyzewski was so high on when he first came into the ACC. Well, there were a lot of rumors that he was going to transfer, that he was unhappy, but he said, no, I want to wear that Duke uniform. The uniform stands for a lot of pride. I want to be here, and I'm going to ultimately contribute, and he has. Absolutely. Tied at 46, 17.05 to go in the ballgame. As Justin Ganey, nothing sensational. His job is to get them to execute their half-court game, to pressure the basketball, and to make some open shots. Kelly threw it away. He'll Carol finish it. Gets it down he'll to finish it. Great he'll finish it. He made it look tough, but he'll finish it. 
Hey, Brad, what do you think of Jason Williams and his development? Isn't he getting better and better? I think he really is. It's the first ball game of the season. He struggled early the first couple of games, but each game he learns a little bit more, and he is truly one of the top performers in the ACC from the point guard position. Boozer being a little more physical defensively in the lane here in the second half for Duke. Grundy, nice spin. Couldn't hit the shot. I'll tell you, Dunleavy's a lot tougher than his body shows. Yeah, isn't he, though? Yeah, he's got that wiry body. The pass the ball, can shoot it. Boozer, beautiful offensive move, but he missed and drew the foul. He has just got all kinds of skills inside. He really does. What a diaper dandy duo they have inside and outside with Jason Williams and Carlos Boozer. We see the kick out by Carroll. Now here comes Jason. He wants a little showtime. He said, I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to lay it on my left hand. And I'm maybe to give me three for that instead of two. Nothing for style points. 16 <laughs> 2 left. Duke has regained the lead by two in a seesaw contest. I tell you, amazing numbers when you look at Mike Krzyzewski's numbers. I look at 86 at that 37 and 3. And last year they went 37. In fact, our guy Jay Billis in the studio, he played on a team in 86 that lost to Never Nervous, Purvis Ellison, and Louisville. Johnny Dawkins, special, special guy. And he's just going to climb the ladder just like the Tommy Amaka and Quinn Snyder. He'll be the next guy to get a call. The amazing thing about this program is there have been a series of special guys, and there is no end in sight for what is certainly the preeminent coach in this game. He is just a star among stars. Marshall Williams done leaving with a long rebound on the miss. Duke trying to build on a three-point lead. Oh, he's a nice kick out to Dunleavy for two. Always oh, looking to drive, draw, and kick the basketball out. Right, that is a philosophy of Duke in their offensive sets. Going to be a foul on Boozer. That's his third. Duke is working its way into a little foul trouble as well, especially as a team. 49-46. Back after this. Which Rich Eisen back in the studio with an update. Number five, Syracuse, the last remaining Division I team to be undefeated in Pittsburgh. Preston Shumpert ties the game at 35 at the half. Syracuse tied with Pittsburgh. And Appalachian State robbing from the rich at Little John on top of Clemson by nine with 10 minutes to go, Mike Patrick. Well, I'm not sure that uh, Clemson is rich anymore. I think they're on the way to the poorhouse. That's. Uh, it's not a very good basketball team. No, Rich Eisen, I'll tell you one thing. Clemson is struggle city. I think Rich can start right now in their backcourt. And be welcome. <laughs> he can shoot the jump shot. He'll pick up with Stuart Scott back there. Archie Miller, number 11, is checked in for Herb Sendek. Kelly mm -hmm. is in there, number 40, playing in the pivot. Remember, he can shoot the basketball, Miller. Nice crossover by Miller. Got away from Williams, but missed the shot. Poser with a rebound to Williams. The lead is three. NC State has to look out for the run. Carrollwell couldn't hold the pass. It was a little behind him. Should have utilized the bounce pass right there. Made the dish. I'll tell you, some outstanding young freshmen right now in college basketball. Talked about Jason Gardner, Jason Williams, Jason Capono down at UCLA as a kid. That's a star. Joe Forte right over at North Carolina. Travis Watson at Virginia. Wilkins. Dunleavy got a hand on it. I tell you, what, oh, in, high school, in high school, he didn't face this kind of pressure. No. Thornton kicks it back to Wilkins. A little two-man game. Shot clock at nine. Miller, 45 degree pass to Wilkins. He backs in on Dunley. He now leans it. Miller's got to force it up. Can he get it off in time? He did. Ah! Rebound to Wilkins. And that's what he does well. One of the premier offensive rebounders in the ACC. I tell you, they got some freshman kids that can rebound. Wilkins here and Travis Watson down in Virginia. There is a lot of fight in the Wolf Pack this year. They'll really command you. Williams kicked it away himself. Nearly lost. Dudley, good job to get it. Then Boozer lost it. I tell you, Herb Sendick's done a great job selling to them, playing on the defensive end, and being unselfish. There's no doubt. I've seen a lot of basketball this year. They are definitely a legit top 20 basketball team, regardless of what happens here today. As you see him working on the offensive boards, and there's Wilkins, the diaper dandy, strong inside player. In high school, they were number one in the nation. St. John's Prospect Hall played with Jason Capel. State with a chance to regain the lead. Grundy back in there with those three fouls. Carwell on him, bad pass. Yeah, picked up his 
his dribble. That's a no-no. Dunleavy, bad pass. Somehow, Duke comes up with it. Missed the shot, but the follow is good. Great hustle down court by the Blue Devils. Boozer running the court. Well, that was Nate oh, James. James. Nate James really getting out of the break. And the Camry crazies go bananas. They appreciated that great hustle play. Grundy, Duke wanted to charge, didn't get it, and Grundy shakes it off and goes right down the lane. You know, a little unorthodox, but he gets it done. James. Is that why not? Is that why not? I did it once with hustle. I'm going to go to the goal again. And now it's rocking and rolling. The 6'6 junior from Washington, D.C. now has 10. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it 11, and that was the third foul on Kelly. I go to a lot of places, Mike, and there are a lot of exciting places across America, but this place is hands down. I think the greatest place to play for a young player. The kids are right there on top of you. It's such a great environment. You know what, Dick? We're up here in the rafters at Duke. On, on a day that's not quite as cold, it's usually 100 degrees up here. You just about die doing a game. And yet we look forward to coming here oh, so much. Always excited. We're always excited. Look at us way up here. Hey, hey, I'm going to jump up and down like that. Hey, I'm going to cheer. Don't, don't <laughs> jump too much. I know. I got this up here. You got to protect me earlier tonight. And I'm not sure that floor underneath of us either. <laughs> Carowell will reach in and a foul. I remember the one night. This is the bar. Oh, wow. You were sitting down. I always stand for the game. You're sitting down. You stood straight up, and that poor thing <laughs> hit right there. I never thought you were coming back. That's when Jerry Stackhouse made that reverse jam in that what a double OT tier we had down here. It was special when North Carolina and Duke. I jumped out of my seat, and I was bleeding and cut. And Mike was my doctor taking care of me. Boy, this team has been up and down in free throws. Against Virginia, they yeah, were just horrid. Then against Wake, they were brilliant. And tonight, brilliant again. Although they've only had 10 attempts, now 11. And 9 out of 11, they'll take that every time. I tell you, it's hard to win when you go, in their case, 10 for 27 against Virginia. Yet they escaped that game with a three-point win at home. Herb said that just a quality guy, a lot of integrity, great work ethic. Knows his game, tremendous mind, just a great basketball IQ. Last time this club was in the NCAA playoffs, 90-91. It looks like they're going to be back this year. Jimmy V was so special when he was at NC State. Who could ever forget 83 winning that national title? Jim Valvano, whose legacy will be more than just basketball, his courageous battle against cancer was so unique and so special. And all you fans out there, if you've ever been touched by Jimmy V in his battle, just call 1 800 4 Jimmy V and make a donation so we can beat that dreaded disease. I don't know anybody that ever even saw him on television, let alone meet him in person, that uh, would not remember him. Uh, he just made you laugh, Mike. I tell you, he could have been Seinfeld before Seinfeld. Probably as quick as anybody could ever left. Oh, he was just unbelievably funny. Carowell to Battier. Double up, you gotta find the open man. Gonna reverse the ball against that trap. Dunleavy for three. He's That's the five. play that Trajan Langdon was so good at. That's Catch the ball, shoot in rhythm, and bury it. Great call, Mike Patrick. Exactly. Trajan Langdon was automatic with that. Just catch and shoot. And that's the shot that's been missing all night tonight, the trifecta. Marshall Williams, the freshman. There's a danger time right now for NC State. Gaining. Williams somehow got it up through the trees to score. He's a very physical player. A young freshman, he's like a man on the floor. Bad pass, excellent defense. Great job by Kenny Inns to hustle down court and pick it off and step to the end line. You know, they expected to win here tonight. I mean, they came here with the proper attitude, NC State. When you listen to all the quotes by all their players, they said, we're not going down and worried about any streak. We're going in with one purpose, to win. I think in their heart of hearts, maybe they didn't expect to win, but they certainly expected to play well. And they have done that. Oh, they have done that. There's no doubt about it. No matter what happens in the last 12 minutes, they've come out and laid a challenge on Duke. And if you don't believe you can win, you can't. Exactly. 57-54 as we hit 12 minutes to go from Cameron Indoor. Reach-in foul on Nate James. That's his third. 
Timeout on the court, 11.58 to go in a close one. 58 to go, Duke by three. National Hockey Night will take center stage on ESPN2 with a doubleheader tomorrow night. 7 o'clock, the Rangers take on the Carolina Hurricanes, led by Paul Coffey and Ron Francis. The blackout is lifted. This game can be seen in North Carolina. At 10 Eastern, the defending Stanley Cup champion Dallas Stars, led by Brett Hall, take on Luke Robitaille and the LA Kings. For more on the NHL, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. NC State giving Duke all it wants here at Cameron Indoor. Pretty good spacing on the offensive end. Really makes it tough with these double ups. They find the open guy. Oh, that's a nice kick out. There's the open guy. You got to make that shot. Thornton had the shot passed on it. Goes inside and charges. Hey. Guess who took the charge? Shane Battier. Yeah, led him last year in taking charges. Was the minister of defense. Should have shot the open shot, Mike. Right now, I'm going to see Wilkins with dribble penetration. Kicks it out. He's wide open. Squares, but he wants to get a little closer. Now he's going to attack the basket, but there's Battier rotating over, getting the good defensive position and drawing the contact. 79 charges taken. That's already a school record. He's only a junior. He's big and bad, baby. Hey, Brad, I want to ask, share some memories of coming in here as a player with some of those great teams you played on. I'll tell you, the one memory I have, Dick, of, of playing here was my uh, sophomore year when uh, we were playing Jay Billis' team, and Michael Jordan had stole the ball at half court, went down to dunk the basketball. He went up to dunk the ball, he lost the ball, and he hit his head on the backboard <laughs> and split his head open. Oh, wow. Up. It was incredible. I've never seen anyone leave the floor and go that high, but oh, we wow. always had a wonderful time. I enjoyed playing here just because of the atmosphere. I think I have a pretty good record here. I don't think we ever lost when I was in North Carolina here, but uh, you've got to be focused when you play in this building, and I'm really impressed with this North Carolina State basketball team. To be a young team, they've really kept their composure. Brad, I was just going to say the same thing. The composure, when they got down early, they just didn't give it up. Exactly. They stand within their offensive sense. Hey, Brad, you're telling me you were 3-0. You beat Billis in that game? I'm telling you I was 4-0. 4-0. Wow, 4-0. 4-0. Hey, Jay Billis, we want some answers about that later on. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the last time anybody was 4-0 coming in here. Not too many going to come here for it, Sid. We stay in the ACC for the second game of our doubleheader tonight. Wake goes against Maryland at 9 Eastern. Both teams give them with 11-5 records, but Maryland still trying for that first conference win. The Terps led by 6-9 forward Terrence Morris. Wake and Maryland following the conclusion of our game. Dave Simpson, Dan Bonner. I saw Wake against North Carolina last Wednesday. They looked really good. They looked really tough, especially inside. And Robert, that's, that's not going to be an easy game for either player. And Robert O'Kelly came out big in that game that you had against North Carolina and against NC State. They shut him down. Justin Ganey did a great job stopping because he can be explosive, O'Kelly. A lot of fouls in this ball game. Both clubs getting themselves in trouble, and that's four on Nate James. And that is really a big problem now with Duke going to the last 11 minutes, not being a deep club, playing only six players. Mike Krzyzewski's got to really be concerned about the guys that are in foul trouble. Kelly's, who's hit two out of four at the line tonight and now has 11 points. And Dunleavy will come in and get James out of there. Hard to realize the way they're shooting here tonight and the way they shot against Wake that they would go 10 for 27 in a game like they did earlier against Virginia. Kelly hits one out of two. The lead is four. I think Mike does a superb job utilizing the six players the way he rotates them in. Gets a body on the floor. They're so versatile. See that's another key. James Carroll and Dunleavy he could play almost anywhere on the floor. Jason Williams hasn't looked for a shot a lot tonight. Probably part of that credit should go to Ganey, and he's, his defense got away. Boozer took his eye off and nearly lost it. I also think they've done a job selling to him the importance of finding the open man. Fouls on Grundy. That is number four on the defensive star, and it will put Duke in the one-on-one. -one. He's got to get Grundy out of the lineup now and save him down the stretch. I would believe, but he's going to go with him right here with four fouls, going to keep him on the floor. Well, the guy he'd have to bring in is Miller. Yeah, I think he's got to, yeah, he's going to do it. He's going to make a sub, make a move. It's not Miller. Well, he's got Kenny Inch back in, uh, trying to come back in the ball game. First point of the half. 
Yeah, he's got to get him out for a couple of minutes to see the flow of the game. But if they start opening up a gap of nine or ten points, then I think he's got to sink or swim and go with his star player and get him on the floor. Carowell, who had 17 in the first half, goes nearly 10 minutes without scoring here in the second half. He got both free throws. And it's 61 to 55. Chris Carowell, just a marvelous player. So unselfish, just so unsung. And a senior who stayed. Yes, sir. How rare is that? It's getting rare that juniors stay. It's getting rare that high school seniors start <laughs> staying. <laughs> We're staying, though. Yes, sir. Ganey bounced it off Williams' foot out of bounds. Now, you could tell at the beginning of the year, NC State was going to make some noise. So was Virginia. I think Wake has real potential. And Duke's almost a given. And, and sometimes that's unfair. The expectations are just so high that even if you lose all the players that Mike Krzyzewski lost, people just expect him to come right back. They see the uniform, and it still says Duke, and that means a lot of winning. There's a walking violation. Defense created that. Had to be a walk on Kenny Inge. See, I think also, and that really affects in the way the voting, when you talk about Coach of the Year honors for years, oh, Dean sure. Smith and Mike Krzyzewski, it's just expected for them to win. So somebody comes out of the woodwork and has a surprising season, and they're voted Coach of the Year. Because you expect somebody to go 30 and 4. Exactly. 10 17 left in the game. Duke now up by six. We've got a triple header of NCAA basketball tomorrow night in the Big Ten. We'll start. Dick and Brad go to Columbus, number 10, Michigan State. Takes on number 15, Ohio State at seven, then at nine. Quentin Richardson, DePaul against Louisville. Sports Center comes on at 11. And then at midnight, we'll go out to the Big West, New Mexico State against Long Beach State. That's a triple header on basketball. Richardson averaging nearly 20 points and almost 10 rebounds a ball game. Second in conference USA in scoring. He's an All-American. He made my Super Six. I just picked. I announced the other day with Khaled Alamine, Richardson, Mim, Kenyon Martin, certainly a great player, Troy Murphy, and Chris Carowell. I just love Carowell. He's got to be on say, there. I was going to say, waiting for Carowell. He's got to be on be there. a little disappointed if he didn't make it. Yes, sir. He's got to be on there. In fact, I should pick a Super Seven and throw Batty yes, on That's there. exactly right. Approaching the halfway point, here comes the trap. Williams didn't see it. Uh -oh. That's a great job by NC State, and Williams is down. Looked like he banged his knee. Might have caught a knee head to head. Jason Williams on a reverse dribble. See, he turned his back on the trap. See, now right here, he's going to turn his back, and as soon as he turns his back, they rotate over and double him up. One of his teammates has got to help him there. And he looks like he's fine. He'll come off for a second. He looks like a halfback. He looks like he'd be one heck of a halfback in football. Strong runner. He's got that Barry Sanders. 90 pounds. He's got that Barry Sanders look. NC State's offense been a little sluggish lately. He playing that good man-to-man -man defense. Oh, right there. Nice drop step. Good post move. Good entry. Yeah, yeah. That's a good play call when you've been struggling. Make sure you get it to one of your scorers inside. Yeah, he really can finish the play inside inch. Knows what to do down in a box. He's got to make that. Dunleavy for three. He normally knocks that baby down. Oh, a little hole they want right here. Mike Krzyzewski cannot believe they didn't pull a hole on Danny. NC State got away with one. I can even tell that from up here, Mike, and I'm blind as can be. Mike Krzyzewski really beefing at Bob Donato. Oh, yes, sir. Watch the hole right here. You're going to watch Gaty now. See, Gaty's not going to let him get to the basketball. He's not going to let him get to the basketball. He's hugging. He said, we're going on a dance. Do a little dance. Well, there's Krzyzewski maybe inflating the hole a little more than it actually was. Kelly leans into one and got the roll. I like the touch of Kelly. Kelly's got a nice little touch. He's got the good back spin. He's been a major factor off that bench. Averages nine. He has 13 tonight. Horizontal it's a two-point game again, Dick. Nice horizontal screen. Carowell trying to step up his offense. Good help defense by NC State. Out of bounds. Off the shoulder of Ron Kelly. They do an excellent job helping one another out. Really closing off driving angles, communicate to each other. As Mike Krzyzewski has said to me so many times, it's not about individual defense. It's about five guys playing together, team defensively, and that's what NC State's doing. They lead the ACC in defense. Only allowing 59 points a game. Battier with a long range. 
mid-range jump shot. And Duke's long-range shooting has really been off tonight. And this is a foul underneath, I think, on Dudley. Or is it Boozer? It'll be Boozer, and it's number four. Take a look here at the scoring leaders tonight as we see the balance in this lineup. Kelly really productive off the bench. But look at this here. Four other guys at nine. The chance to have five guys in double figures. And that's been their scoring basically all year. Balance, balance, balance. No star. And coaches love that because you can't just concentrate on one guy and shut him down. And you can find a weak link in the defense. Yeah, you love it. But if you can get yourself a super like Mr. Jordan, you say, hey, everybody else join the brain. That's a little different. Kelly again. Jump hook won't go. NC State battling on the boards. Wilkins saves it. It's only a two-point game. They're having a tough time defending Kelly down in the box inside. They got Boozer checking him. Ganey goes baseline. Somehow he just got lost. They let him go, and he ties it. He's one of those clutch performers. Always comes up, it seems, with a big shot. Made the big shot to beat Maryland. Last year beat Georgia Tech with a big three and beat Purdue with that. ACC Big Ten Challenge. Dunley, the open for three, seemed to fade away a little bit. Had a good look. Duke has hit only two of 11 three-point shots. Bodies everywhere. Kelly from four feet got it. NC State the lead. He's having a star of stars nights off that bench. A roll-aid special. Remember, 43 in a row, baby. 63-61 Wolfpack. It's down by two. North Carolina State has been on a 9-2 to run to take the lead. Boozer wheels into the lane, missed the shot. Battier with a rebound, and he's fouled. Jay Battier trying to help his teammate out after Boozer made that nice little drop step and left-handed play in the lane. Came up trying to grab that offensive rebound. Third foul on Kenny Hinge. I know that Duke showed a lot of character, Mike. They were on the ropes big time against Virginia at Virginia. They were down 10 late in that game, came back and ultimately won it in overtime and showed a lot of character because I am really impressed with some of the people that Virginia has and Chris Williams and Watson and that whole gang, Donald Ham. Battier, the best free throw shooter in the ACC at 83.9%. This is his first trip tonight. Only seven points on the evening for the young man who averages 15-7. It's them both. Duke is tied it at 63. North Carolina State and Duke nodded in a good one. 63 all with 7.26 to go in the ball game. We've got college football for you this weekend. The top seniors in the country will showcase their talents in the Rivals.com hula ball. Heisman Trophy winner and two-time Rose Bowl MVP Ron Dane headlines the contest. Duke fans will get to see wide receiver Scotty Montgomery led the Blue Devils in receiving each of the last three years. Finished as their number two all-time leading receiver. Saturday, 3.30 on ESPN. It's the Rivals.com hula ball. Kelly. Grundy to Ganey. He makes the big buckets. I'll tell you, he does make the big basket. He's a clutch performer, but a nice look by Grundy. Penetrated in the lane. Kelly kicked it out to Grundy. Nice steal. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Wilkins it all up. the way in against Williams, and Williams fouled him. Oh, Mike, you got to give the rock up there in transition. You got yourself a little layup. I don't think he ever seen him. Lack of communication. Is the deflection a steal? Now here he is coming out. See, his head's down. His head's down. So he has no vision of a teammate to his left. Ganey's got a call. So get me the rock. He's got a call. Great anticipation on Wilkins' part to make the steal, though. He's three out of three at the line tonight. Hey, Brad. He has nine points. Hey, Mike. Sorry, Mike. Brad. Hey, you're coming down two on one. You're ahead. You like to get the rock, don't you? Well, if you have a big guy, you better get him to rock when he's trailing. I think what happened on that particular play, though, Dick, is he was trying to get control of the basketball, so he never picked up his teammate, so he just took it to the basket extremely strong. I want to know, did his uncle ever jam on you? Never. I blocked every one of his jams. <laughs> No, no. I went to Sports Center highlights, and you were a human highlights film. He ducked right on you. He must have scored those 17,000 points against someone else, Brad. That's exactly right. It was a die. <laughs> Bowser. He got, got the, the roll. Isn't he nice and smooth inside? He really knows what to do once he touches the ball, and he gets it in the lane. 
He has 17. Duke has cut into the lead again. Remember, people, 43 in a row, 26 in a row in the ACC, trying to tie David Thompson's era of North Carolina State with the longest, 27 in a row. Well, Duke is going to have to go get these guys. NC State has shown no signs of giving it up. Kelly with a miss, rebound to Carrollwell. We thought they'd come out here in a street fight and that they wouldn't back down. They had that kind of swagger to them. Well, it's brass knuckle time right now. We've just hit six minutes. And for the coaches, it's mailbox mashing time. Get the mailbox out. I get some touches to Boozer inside. Get Boozer some touches around the basket. Battier lost it, got it back, and put it in. Boy, is he special. He got a lucky break that they deflected the basketball, so that was a good play. No doubt, Mike. He's super scintillating sensational. He's a 3S man, Mr. Battier. Herb Sendek wants a timeout as Duke has hit two straight buckets to cut the lead back to one. And here are the win streaks that we've been talking about. North Carolina State between 72 and 75 racked up a then unheard of 27 wins in a row. That was Duke's. Uh, go Jeff ahead. Mike. Duke has uh, tied its own record from 62 to 64 when they dominated. And they are one away from tying that 27-game win streak that was set 25 years ago. Look at the margins of victory right here, Mike. Unbelievable. 28.4 and a home win streak, 21.5. And that North Carolina State team, basically, you're talking about Monty Tao, David Thompson, and Norm Sloan's club. They were unbelievable. How did Monty Tao get featured billing over David Thompson? I know. It should happen. The greatest small forward I ever seen in my life was David Thompson on a collegiate level the only guy I might challenge with him is Mr. Bradley at Princeton well when uh, Brad Doherty was talking about Michael Jordan hitting his head on the backboard my immediate thought was of David Thompson he probably cut his chin <laughs> on the top of the backboard somewhere right block inside by Fadier he, he comes up with a huge defensive play he leads him in block shots get it to Boozer inside Boozer has it kicked back to Williams spins out Carlos should have taken that ball right to the basket, drop step, and attack the goal. Grundy playing with the four fouls. Gets a screen from Keller. 5-0-4 and counting from Cameron Indoor. Wilkins really poised for a freshman. Kelly, he's gotten too many easy shots from the lane. Got another one there. I can't understand that, Mike. How he's getting so wide open, and he's shown all night long he can make that shot. No one really putting a hand in his face. Kelly has 17 points, which matches his season high. Battier looking for Carowell. Got him with a reverse. What a nice combination. The Battier. two veterans taking over. Stabilizes Battier and Carowell making the play down the stretch. They're struggling, they're behind, and they step up like P.T. Pierce. Please now the best. pressure will fall on NC State with a crowd going nuts. Ganey tied up, jump ball. Oh, that's where you get penalized. Throw it up, toss it up. Great defensive play by Jason Williams, but the arrow goes the other way. There's the change of direction. Now look at Jason. He's going to step in. He gets all ball on Justin Ganey. That's tremendous defense. Yes, it is. You know, they almost got this rule right last year when they got rid of this silly alternate possession thing, and then they wouldn't carry through with it, and they went back to the old system. Oh, look. Thornton on the jam. Oh, what a breakdown by Duke defensively. Nobody's seen the basketball on a man on the floor. Lack of effort on the defensive end, and they get a layup. Mike Krzyzewski will not like that one. But I'll review that tomorrow. Carowell lost the dribble. This is getting danger time right now for Duke, Mike. These kids really believe, you can see in their swagger, that they can win here. North Carolina State came in here asking no quarter. They've certainly given none. Oh, take a look at Thornton. He just steps out. Nobody sees the ball, sees the man. No communication. Special situations come up big for NC State. 72-69 Wolfpack. 3.50 to go. Loose ball, Dunleavy. Three on one. Carowell. He's fouled. 
good guy to get the basketball because he normally finishes the play. There are a lot of guys who get out in transition, can't finish the play. Four on Kenny Inge, and the advantage that uh, the Duke normally has going down the stretch is that all of them are excellent free throw shooters. Hey, Brad, I want to ask you this. A lot of people earlier this year didn't think Chris Carroll could play at the next level. Having been there yourself and been a star there, how do you evaluate his game? Oh, Dick, if they probably have a basketball, pro basketball team, I want a guy like Chris Carroll on my team. I would love to play with Chris Carroll. He's so aggressive, he attacks the basket, and he's a very smart basketball player. There's plenty of room for him in the NBA. That's not a worry. And Brad, he's at 8 out of 10 at the line and has 22 points tonight. He can make this a one-point game with this one. And he also defends well, Mike, against Florida State. Florida State played its best game, half game of the year, and was up a deuce. And in that game, he held Ron Hale, who's so underrated, to one for seven. Misses the second shot. Contact, no whistle. Ganey, look out! Knocked out of bounds by the Blue Devils. 3.34 left. NC State tried to spring a huge upset. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Toyota Trucks. Unbreakable every day. Three minutes, 34 seconds to go in this game. The Duke Blue Devils have not lost a game at home in over three years. January 11, 1997. They are down by two to NC State. If the Wolfpack can win tonight, it would put them in a tie for first place. They'd be even with Duke with one game in the loss column. I'll tell you, Mike, win or lose, I'm just telling you off the air, there's no doubt in my mind that this year this club will be part of the 64 dance. They're an NCAA basketball team, North Carolina State. They got balance, they got size, they got toughness. They are going to have an outstanding year. Well, this is certainly the ultimate test, beating Duke at Duke, because nobody else does it. Good handle. Ganey, nice head fake to get three. Kicks it out to Grundy. Left all alone. He missed. He created the opening for Grundy with that head fake. Now you talk about coming to the end of the game. This has got to be Battier, basically, and Carroll time. Every possession gets big. The foul will be on Ganey. And the free throw line gets bigger and bigger as we go here late in the game. 3.15 on the clock. And now they're in the double bonus situation. That was the 10th team foul on NC State. Jason Williams, certainly a really outstanding diaper dandy. From day one, he's been handed the basketball and been told you're going to play like 35 minutes every night in a winning program. The same with Jason Gardner at Arizona. These kids are not just stepping in getting experience. It's winning experience. And you got to like him when he first got here. They said, you're going to be under a lot of pressure. And he said, I like pressure. Yeah, he loves it. You can see the look on his eye. The same with Gardner down at Arizona. They really welcomed the challenge. Williams with only five points tonight. His sixth could tie it. Missed again. Duke has missed some big free throws in the last three or four minutes. Yeah, they have not shot the ball well from the perimeter, but a lot of that I attribute to the perimeter defense by North Carolina State. Now, here comes down the game. Execution important. Battier went for the steal. Boozer gets the block, but Thornton got it back. Now they're on the floor. Check ball situation. Both the possession goes to Duke this time. And the possession arrow on the opera, on the same side of the court that we are, so normally we can see it right away, but we have to wait. I tried to memorize it though from last time, Mike, because we see the rotation over. And there's the black shot. Now they dive to the floor. Everybody's scrapping it. Claw. Hey, it's a loose ball. Here we go. And we see the rotation over there. There's Boozer coming up. Some block. Norton takes it up with authority. Yes, he really does. He's got strong body, experience, very physical, and tough. See, right now, I've got Boozer a little handle inside. They haven't shown me they can handle him when he gets the ball in deep. Battier left the line for three. Rebound to Boozer. Take it off. Take it off. Against Kelly and the foul on Kelly. I really love Carlos Boozer's game. It's getting better and better. I saw him at Sonny Vaccaro's All-Star game, the Adidas All-American game, the Magic game, and he showed there that he was really a star among all the super young players. Hey, guys, 
Four on Kelly. It's a Boozer will go to the line for a pair. It's amazing seeing so many young kids come right out of the high school uniform and be able to dazzle. Michigan's got three right now. Lavelle Blanchard, certainly a big time star. Got two. And the pressure is on these kids because of players leaving early. Boozer is at seven out of eight tonight, 17 points. Ties it at 72. Got that nice girl, beautiful mom and dad. I met his family, just beautiful people. You can see it's reflected by his attitude. In and out, three times in a row, they missed the second half with two shot opportunities. Put a lot That's of, not like Duke. Put a lot of pressure on Duke right now. You get a score in his possession. Remember, people, 43 in a row. That's big at home. The second longest winning streak in America to the Utes of Utah. Kelly. Oh, and a rare miss for Kelly. He's been deadly this game. A little air ball right there, and he has been superb on the inside. Williams with a long three. Return air ball. Not really a kind of shot you wanted. He was way behind the arc. That looked like one of those shots where he made up his mind in advance he was going to take it when he got down. Yeah, there. really bad shot right there. We had a bad shot last night at the end of the game. Florida against Tennessee by a freshman, Brett Nelson, who just panicked at the end. 209 and counting. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale, Brad Darty, our entire ESPN crew. Glad you could join us for a great game from Cameron Indoor. It has a tough pass for Wilkins to handle, and he's double teamed and has to call a timeout. It has really been one heck of a basketball game. A lot of good, solid defense. Excellent job of penetrating. NC State will have only one timeout left. ABC's NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber tips off Saturday with three teams from the top 25. One Eastern Florida State against number 21 North Carolina. Then eighth ranked Kansas will face Missouri. Check out your local listings for the games in your area. Then at 3 o'clock on the West Coast, number three Stanford against the California Golden Bears. ABC Sports this Saturday. For more on college basketball, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, Go.com. Take a look at the foul. Thornton, trickle. Grundy, Kelly, and Inge all with four. Three of those guys are starters. That could spell trouble if this game were to go to overtime. So they want to get out of here with a W in regulation. Well, you said two overtime. Well, I'll take three tonight. I'll take three. Got nowhere to go. It's early. We're going to stick around, Mike. That's right. It's not even 9 o'clock Eastern yet. Exactly. Each possession becomes so huge here. Grundy, what a shot. Is that a big-time shot? Spinning in the lane. He's showing now that he wants to be their special player. He showed it against White with 30. What a big basket. He has 11 tonight, the lead two for the Wolfpack. And they're jumping all over Raleigh, North Carolina. But don't jump too soon. There's a lot of time yet. Carrollwell, nice double team. He forced a shot up a senior mistake. And Wilkins with a good rebound. And now they got to manage the clock, protect the basketball. When they went for the double team, somebody had to be open. And he didn't see it. Trying to get that good space in, spreading out on the court, taking time off that clock. Can NC State do it? Duke, 43 in a row at home. 26 ACC games in a row. Got to watch the five-second count if you're six feet away from the offensive player with the ball. Shot clocks at five, and he turned it over. Paul the basketball. And that's really a rarity for the experienced senior who has more experience than anyone in the ACC with the exception of Ed Coda. That is the trouble, Dick, when you get under 10 on that shot clock and you have initiated your offense so far out, sometimes guys really have to gamble in order to get any kind of a shot. They start panicking. They exactly. Panic. Wake and Maryland coming up next. Dave Simpson, Dan Bonner standing by at Cole Fieldhouse. We talked about the... Uh, North Carolina State having the new arena. They're working on Maryland's new arena. Exactly. Right now we get down to a situation where Duke has got to get a good possession here and watch the offensive rebound. So many times we've seen the offensive rebound become so big. We saw it last night in a game, Brad Nessler and I, in that Florida-Tennessee game. They don't want to do it right now here. They're no, sir. They want to put a little innovations, like get some air conditioning. Oh, this place seats 9,314. It's the toughest ticket on the face of the earth. But don't change it. They're thinking about making some changes. 
All right, here we go, Mike, right down the stretch. 43, baby, on the road. 26 in a row in the ACC. Loser. Oh, a little weave outside. Carrollwell tripped on the way down the lane, and they're going to call the foul on Thornton. That'll be five on Thornton. Yeah, he's bye-bye right now. So they lose to 6'8", Junior. We're going to see Carroll now attack the basket. He knows Thornton's got four fouls on him. He gets tripped. Well, that's not much of a foul on Thornton. Not really. Now we get down to free throw shooting. Really big. And this kid here has been clutched throughout his career. He was big last year in a game that looked like it was getting away from them against St. John's down the stretch on a free throw line. They're freezing him a little bit, taking some time. He's thinking about it, but he's experienced. He's been there. He's played in so many big games. He's hit 8 out of 11, 22 points. This is the eighth time this season he scored 20 or more. The third leading scorer in the ACC at 17-1. And these are huge. You want to protect your home turf. You don't want to lose whenever you're competing to win a championship in a league. The Dukes won six of them in the 90s in a regular season. Missed the first. Boy, they've missed some big free throws. They've hit three out of seven in the last four minutes. Dick, and if they shoot tough. the way they normally do, they it's tied or they have the lead. And they're the best free throw shooting team in the conference, 75% for the year. And you don't see teams shooting 75%. Not like today. And here comes full court pressure. They got one point game. Carroll matched up now with Grundy. He's versatile, can play a lot of people, can play inside people, perimeter people. There's a 16 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Grundy got inside. Shot won't go for him. Duke has the ball and a chance to win. And Carroll did a great job defensively on Grundy. His size bothered him on that shot. Now here we go. Will Mike Krzyzewski take Watch a timeout? the timeout. Get the timeout. Herb wants the timeout. Marshall Williams gets the ball into the front court and will take the timeout with 18 oh. seconds to go in the game. Duke by one. This is fantastic. A lot of people wonder why I get so excited. I mean, it's unbelievable. You make your living seeing games like last night and tonight. Tomorrow, Michigan State and Ohio State. Right now, watch the offensive rebound because they really attack the glass if they miss the shot. All right, keep in mind they are without Thornton, one of their best rebounders. He has just fouled out of the ball game. Kenny Inge, though, can climb the glass with the best of them. Of course, you get excited when you wake up in the morning and find a <laughs> hair on the pillow, you yeah, know? I'm even excited on our meeting this morning, <laughs> and I walked in tired with three hours sleep. Matter of fact, you get excited at more things than anybody I've ever <laughs> met. Ah, uh, that's the way I try to attack life. Always look at the glass half filled rather than half empty. If there is a held ball, North Carolina State has the uh -oh. possession here. Uh-oh, here we go, baby. Will that winning streak come to an end? Call all your friends up. Tune in, baby. The Dukies could be in trouble. 18 ticks on the clock, and they're up one. 75-74. Oh. Miller is in. The great outside shooter. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here we Gainey. go. Sean Miller wanted a foul. Sean Miller wanted a foul. And Duke wanted to travel. No, they don't have a timeout. They have no timeouts. That's what he was waving. That's a technical. Yes, it is. That's a technical. And that means Duke will shoot two oh. and get the basketball. Are you kidding? Oh, reminiscent of, yes, North Carolina and Michigan. The Chris Mr. Weber Rambo. play. And what a terrible break for Justin Ganey. Yes, sir. An experienced player, a kid that really is such a bright kid. Lost. See, coach's responsibility. They got to be accountable, letting their players know at every moment how many timeouts. How many? I'm sure they told them in a previous possession, but yeah, sometimes sure guys did. don't listen. Well, you tend to panic. In a situation like this where you get down on the floor, the one react. thing you're thinking of, you normally call timeout. Yeah, you react. Yeah. So it is a technical, technical foul. foul. Keep in mind that Duke has not shot free throws very well at all down the stretch. 
They get two here, and then they get the basketball. The big thing is they get the basketball with the lead. I can guarantee you that during the previous timeout, they talked about timeouts. Herb Sendick is that prepared as a coach, but sometimes players just don't listen. Sure. Dick, if North Carolina State loses this game because of this, it will really leave a sour taste in their mouth because they played so well all night. Oh, they played brilliantly, but they can also leave knowing they are really a legitimate team. There's no doubt about to me. I've seen a lot of clubs. They're a top 20 basketball team. Right now, the streak is alive. Battier, two for two at the line. The best shooter in the ACC. Sean Miller, see from up here, I thought he was screaming about it. But he's screaming about, no, we have no timeouts. We have no timeouts. This would make it a three-point lead. Remember, they get the ball. Got it. Battier applauds the break. A three-point lead. Duke will get the ball, and NC State has to foul, which will send them back to the line for two more, unless they can make the steal. you got to try to make that steal really hard. you got to pressure, play the passing lane, and if you don't, you got to foul immediately. Carrollwell has to get it in Dunleavy, and he's fouled. And he's 9.6 left. Yes, he's Dunleavy is a good shooter. As you know, they can't send anybody out there who isn't a good shooter. What a heartbreaking loss for these kids from North Carolina State who came here with a purpose, who came here as a team and really exerted a great effort. And I really hope for Justin Ganey that he doesn't allow this to tear him up inside because the bottom line is the kid's been a solid player for four years in an NC State uniform. We'll get you to Wake Forest, Maryland as soon as we're done here. Maryland with an early 10-point lead in that ball game. Oh, you can feel the pain he's feeling right there. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I really, my heart goes out yes, to him right now. Because he plays his heart out. He plays so hard. He gives everything he has. You know, you talked about Wojciechowski getting the most out of his ability. I would utilize that same statement for Justin Ganey. And Grundy just fouled out of the ball game. And now Dunleavy going to line for the first time tonight. Coming into the game shooting 74-4. He can virtually ice it with one out of two. Makes one out of two. We got a two-possession game. And with nine ticks, that's not going to get over. That's it's a pretty cool there, isn't it? It's academic. The bus driver just ran outside. He's warming up that engine. Get ready for the journey down to Raleigh. And they can take with them a tremendous effort tonight. Herb Sendick's got to be proud of the effort of his kids. But moral victories are not part of his vocabulary. Five-point lead. They'll try to get it to Miller, presumably, if they can get him the basketball. This is Tip Duke playing a lot of defense. Right down the lane goes Williams. He'll make the bucket. They cannot call a timeout. 3.3 3 left. North Carolina State gets the ball back. They are still alive. And the bus driver just ran back. He just ran back. He turned the engine off. He just wrecked the bus. Oh, wow. Now will they run a play for Miller? He can shoot the three. And now Duke will call a timeout. Holy cow. See, in my situation, I know with Jimmy Valvano, he felt the same way. I wouldn't allow him to shoot the three. When under five seconds on the clock, you make them go to the line. People say, well, suppose he misses and you grab the rebound. If you can't grab the basketball or if he converts and take it out and get the ball inbounds, you don't deserve. There's too many things have to happen to get beat if the kid goes to the foul line. I would let him get a look at a three, Mike. Miller has hit one out of two three-point shots tonight. Yeah, see, I would foul. That's what he's saying. Foul him. Don't allow him. See what he's saying? Foul him. Don't allow him to shoot the three. There's less than five seconds. Why would you? The three is too high percentage of the shot. Well, that was also before the timeout. Yeah. Because he thought they were going to inbound the ball right away. They can give a foul. It would be the seventh that would put him to the line for the 1-1. One -one. Wilkins will inbound. I tell you, what a gutty bunch of kids from North Carolina State. They really are. They're going to have a Miller around the double screen, and they saw him coming. So they'll get it to Ganey. He's double teamed, and he fouled. Oh, my goodness. He nearly oh. made it. They had two guys swarming on top of him, and now he'll go to the line for three free throws. But oh. Is he giving up three free throws out there? Well, he was two miles past the line, I believe. Yeah, but I think he might have gotten the call like we're so far away before before he let the shot go up. Let's see what he's giving him out here. We can't tell up here. 
Well, he didn't say one and one, so it's got to be three. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. First time to the line for Ganey. You don't foul a kid in the act of shooting the ball. Oh, he missed the second one. A chance for redemption for Ganey. And now the only thing he can do is try to miss with eight tenths of a second left. And now this timing is, is special, Dick. You've got to put the ball up as soon as it touches your hand. Exactly. And you've got to block out. But let me tell you this, Mike. When you talk about fouling, we're not talking about fouling the shooter and the the shooter. I mean, that doesn't make any intelligence at all. I am shocked with Duke in that situation. He missed it. stretch. Mike Krzyzewski oh. can't believe it. Is Brad down there? Brad, what about this right now, this finish? I guess we can't get Brad. He's lost to the camera. I Brad's can't imagine he could hear anything. Uh, what chaos at the end. Now here it is. There's a block out by Boozer. And there comes Marshall Williams right down the gut. And he converts. Good call by the official. He got it off, Mike. He got it off in time. The horn didn't go, the buzzer didn't go. All right, here's the shot clock. I believe he got it off in time. We're going to watch it. Oh, I don't know. Ooh, that is so close. But remember, double zero doesn't end the game. It is the buzzer, it is the horn. It is the horn, and there's a red light up on top. It is close. What a finish. Cannot get the end. I can't emphasize enough. I cannot believe Duke fouled on a three-point attempt. But you got to give Ganey credit for making the shot attempt. Absolutely. And if you're going to double-team him and foul him, you might as well make sure he doesn't have a chance exactly. to get that and foul him before he shoots. Exactly, Mike. Exactly. Not in each team shooting. Each team will get an additional timeout in overtime. So North Carolina State is not, back in business for timeouts. Not a smart finish by Duke. Duke really, so many times we've seen them play, play with their heads, play intelligent basketball at the end, did not hear. And a good job by Ganey to get that shot up, which he's trying to miss, and hit the rim and have it kick out so one of his teammates has got a chance. And he redeems himself a little yes, bit for the did. timeout. Good guys, get a break. And he got a break. Five minutes more, tied at 79 at Cameron Indoor. Free basketball for you from the ACC. And remember, NC State really now playing shorthanded. Thornton out of the game. Wendy out of the game. Jason Williams will bring it up against Ganey. Duke's been in two OTs. They beat Virginia in overtime. They lost to Stanford in OT. Williams short on that one, then makes the steal, tosses it inbounds. And they're going to say that ball went off NC State. I thought it bounced off Boozer. Yeah, it looked like it did hit Boozer, but Duke gets a break there. From up here, it looked like it hit Boozer. Well, no, no, it gets well, the then it hit Williams. Yes, after sir. After it hit Boozer. Williams off. Great offensive rebound. Carowell wheels into the lane. Missed the shot. And then commits the foul. I can't say enough about the effort of these kids. I've seen so many teams succumb to the Cameron Crazies, to the Duke basketball team, the pressure they face. These guys have not backed away one iota here. And in two situations where you really had to leave them for dead after the timeout call that they didn't have, they still make a huge steal, get back in the ball game after a basket, miss the second of three free throws that could have tied it, and then get a follow. And you get the feeling that Marshall Williams, even though he's a 57% free throw shooter, is not going to miss this. He is the guy who got the follow at the buzzer to send it into overtime. Well, they tell me how much they like his potential. Hey, Brad, what about the finish down the end? And follow. Unbelievable. The follow the three-point shot. Incredible, Dick. Marshall Williams did a great job of stepping in, being assertive. It's this young basketball team from North Carolina State will not go away. Very good game for showing a lot of composure tonight. Maryland off to an early sensational run. They're up 20 to 2. Here's another double team. Battier followed by Carroll. Got the oldest ball. Duke got a break there. Carroll only 
seems to come up with the loose ball. Whenever it's on a deck, he has a nerve to find the basketball. There's Katie and Williams going at it all night long. Little Lionel Richie all night long. Here they are. Tied at 81. Wilkins against Dunleavy. Pretty good physical matchup for Wilkins. He leans in, and it's a charge. Well, you called him, Mike. He leaned in with his body, and that created the charging situation. Well, you know, Dunleavy's going to go flying if he gets hit. Now, here it goes. Yeah. Look at that body. There's the head fake, and now he leans in. Dunleavy goes flying, and here it is, the call. Well, once you lower the shoulder, you have no chance. These officials are too good. They're going to make that call. We said it was going to be tough, that Duke's going to have to earn winning 44. And, baby, they are really going to have to earn it to go to that locker room with a W. Whoever wins it tonight will have earned it. Matty Ada Dunley, he got it back. Goes baseline. Great right pass. has his head up always looking for someone Duke by two same thing on the defensive end he's always playing a team defensive game he's in the lane always looking to give help NC State playing really short-handed as you look at the field goals Kelly blocked by Boozer the rebound to Williams well Duke coming out with a little more fire in its belly in overtime probably got the little advantage Mike they're really playing short-handed without Thornton and Grundy and Duke's at home. Boozer wants the ball inside. He's effective around here. Against Kelly, he got him. He's effective. He's a star. There's no doubt about it. He's going to be a star at Duke. Not there yet, but he will become one. 85-81. Herb Sendak only has one timeout in overtime. One more bucket. He may have to use it. Yeah, you get one extra timeout during the overtime, and he needed it because they didn't have any left. That regulation. Williams. He's trying to set a screen, the ball screen up here for Danny. Duke really putting on pressure defensively. Bank shot, no good rebound to Wilkins. He is a talented offensive rebounder. Bob Gibbons is on the money in reviewing this kid's ability to rebound. Really has a sense for the game. What? What a play, Dudley, and then he calls timeout. What a tremendous play by Mr. Dunleavy. Oh, his daddy's going to be proud. He's saying that. with me when I coach. There he is with the block. Oh. Came out on. Ganey makes the block, calls the timeout. Oh. Sensational for Dunleavy. Wow. Wow. Wake really with a split personality. They can look so good one game and then turn around and it just doesn't work. I think Maryland's playing with a state of urgency right now. 0-3 in the conference. You see here the reset. NC State with the possession arrow. Duke has still only committed 18 fouls here in the second half. Leads by four. And the Blue Devils have the ball with 2.03 to go. Have no timeouts. Two important guys sitting on the sideline. Grundy and Thornton fouled out of the game. So they're playing shorthanded right now, NC State. Battier going for the home run to Bozer. And he bounced it off his foot. He looked to see who was coming and dribbled the ball off of his foot. And how big would that be? I mean, you're looking right now, a six-point lead instead of four. He lost vision in the basketball seat. He caught it. He thought he had the layup. He was thinking about the layup too soon. Cornelius Williams, the 6'11 defender, was coming from behind. This is Ganey. Dangerous pass. Wilkins leans in. Short. Williams with a rebound. Lost it. Spread the court now and use some clock. Nice screen by Battier. He does all the intangibles. I'll tell you, he's just a solid team player. 130 to go in the ballgame. Duke by four. We are in overtime. Dare I say the first overtime. Now they're going to execute their foul line extended offense, trying to get people away from the help side, creating opportunities for some back cuts. It's a reach in foul on Ganey. It's his third. Duke will shoot two. Mike Krzyzewski said, hey, it's got to be a lot easier than this. I mean, it's got to be a lot easier than this. But not with a bunch of young players like they have. But they always seem to find a way now, Mike, to go back to the locker room with the double. What a way to learn how to play. Win and learn. Carowell now with 28 points. Matches here's career high. 
Here comes Archie Miller in the ball game, the long-range shooter. They may need threes here in a hurry. And Carowell has played every minute of this ball game. He's just an iron man, just a tough kid. Comes to play, puts that uniform on with a sense of pride, and just a great, great hustling kind of scrappy kid. A guy that really learns, helps other people learn how to win because his attitude becomes contagious to everyone. The lead is five. Wilkins. Oh, what a great move to get free out to Miller. Got it for three. And that's Miller time, and that was his specialty before he got hurt. Not shot the ball well this year. But he really came back from a tough injury, a back surgery. They Duke just go by two. Play. Do you see second overtime written on this? Well, why not? Let's go. We said we wanted three. We said all night they wouldn't go away. They made us look like profits. Shot clock at 13. Duke is up by two. Williams. Got numbers. Got Battier. Loser. What a pass by Battier, who has four assists in overtime. A great pass by Battier. The one about Boozer holding position and having the hands to be able to convert. Carowell is now on Miller if they want to go for the three again. He takes the biggest challenge all the time. He knows they want to shoot the three. Now look at him. Look at the big guy playing the little kick. I mean, look at this right here. You got Carowell playing the little guys. So he's going to beat him with the dribble. Miller down the lane. Great distance. And holy cow, what a play. Miller says, I'm not going to get the three off with Carowell, but I'm going to beat him with dribble penetration and create an opportunity. That is such a smart, smart play. I want to go to the locker room and shake the hands, not only of the victors, but whoever loses this game, Mike. They have just put on an unbelievable effort here tonight for the fans, for everybody watching. Just a tremendous effort. A lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. And Dick, you're absolutely right about Miller. They couldn't work enough screens to get him that wide open shot. He knew he couldn't get it over Carroll, so he had to drive on. College basketball. The jersey still says Duke at NC State, and that makes it exciting. There's Carroll. There's the catch by Boozer, the good entry by Battier. He has great hands, Boozer. Great hands. 13.1 seconds left. Is this fun? Oh, this, this is fun. Now, I know you do all that football, man, but this is fun. This is just wonderful. Battier, he has played every minute tonight, a career high. He has 10 assists, four of them coming in overtime. Well, they wear down at the end of the year. That's the only thing. I mean, these kids are playing unbelievable tough minutes. I know those kids want PT playing time. They're getting it. They inbound the foul immediately with 12.1. And they're smart enough to get the ball to Carroll. Oh, this guy's smart enough. He was a 3.96 student, industrial management major at Carnegie Mellon, one of the great institutions in America. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Carnegie Mellon is not a place you just show up and take a few classes. I couldn't get in there, I can tell you that. I couldn't spell Carnegie. You couldn't get into just Mellon. I couldn't get into Mellon. Right, I couldn't spell Mellon Maryland is just hammering Wake early. We'll get you up there as soon as this one is over, but this may take a while. Carowell can make it a two-possession lead with both shots. Hits the first. Another big night for Carowell. Had a big one against Maryland, a big one against Virginia. You almost expect every night for him to be big. 29 points, a new career high for Carowell. 11 out of 16. This one is huge. This makes it a two-possession game. And there it is. 90, 86. Some reason you feel something miraculous is going to happen. Miller. Nice drive, nice dish. Before point eight left, a two-point lead. They get it in, and the foul, Nate James with the basketball, and they foul him 4.2. Boy, Miller has made two enormous plays, not shooting in overtime. Well, he made the big three, and then he made two penetration moves, showed his ability to handle the basketball and attack the goal. He had that unfortunate injury that really slowed down his career. As you look at Anthony Grundy sitting on that sideline, looks like he's playing with a contact. All right, neither team has a timeout here. 4.2 left. Three out of three for the line for James tonight. He's got to make these free throws. I mean, this game is not over. You've seen one miraculous play after another. Can blame out another. Yeah, I don't think Duke fans would be comfortable if he only makes one. And they'll be terribly uncomfortable as he makes the first. If he missed the first. Yes, sir. 
Now, this is the game right here, Mike. This is Lux City, USA, if he converts, and they go up to 44 in a row, and they tie NC State with 27 in a row in the ACC if he converts this free throw. Mike had the bus drive right here a half an hour. I know. He came back, though. I saw him run back. I mean, it was unbelievable how poorly Duke played at the end of that regulation. 4.2 seconds in overtime. James hits them both. Now NC State truly needs a miracle. And they're going to stay away from Miller. If he wants to shoot the three, they'll let him. He goes down the lane. That's it. They won the game, and I'll tell you this. you got to credit Duke as well as the great effort by NC State because a lot of teams would have followed it as well, even at home. But Duke stayed there and met the challenge. North Carolina State came in here with its best team in 11 years and gave Duke everything it had. That last bucket will not count by Miller after the buzzer. What a game. Tonight's final. Duke, 92-88 over North Carolina State. Wake Forest in Maryland next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale, Brad Doherty, this is Mike Patrick. Let's go to Rich Eisen. Rich.